Pasco and Poland and the main legislature. And I have to say, it is really a great honor to introduce our next speaker. After six years of serving in the minority in the main legislature, it has been an awesome, awesome experience serving in the majority in the last few years. each and every one of you and so many of our fellow Republican volunteers around me that I am able to introduce our next speaker. Your commitment to electing Republicans gives us a chance to make Maine prosperous again. Our governor, Paula Page, has an inspiring story to tell. This guy is not a politician. Instead, he's a businessman who's committed every day to making Maine prosperous. He knows what it takes to create jobs. Here in Maine, it's all about jobs. No more political spin or rhetoric. This man is plain talking and a no-nonsense yeah, kind of guy. Okay. Yeah. No more empty promises like those coming out of Washington today. Instead, he's making promises and he delivers on those promises. If only the Obama administration had the courage and the political will to make the tough decisions our Governor LePage is making in Maine. The people of the state of Maine are lucky to have a man who is like Paul LePage, who is willing to serve. A solid, rock-solid Republican leader who believes in lower taxes, smaller government, responsible spending, and reducing regulations for our job creators. A guy who doesn't pay attention to the public opinion polls or editorials or, or popularity contest, contests, and who does the job that we elected him to do. I am honored to stand here today and introduce a great American and a breath of fresh air in Maine state government. My friends, the governor of the great state of Maine, Paul
as a businessman. I knew how to create jobs because I spent my life in the business community. Creating jobs, turning companies around, bringing prosperity to small main businesses. In one of the toughest anti-business climates in the United States of America. I knew how to find efficiencies in programs and how to lower taxes as my experience as a mayor. I promised to lower taxes for Maine people. Our opponents said it couldn't be done. Remember Elliot Cutler, he's still running for governor. <laughs> he mocked me, said I was pandering to the Maine people. But with the help of the Republican legislature, we produced what Elliot Cutler and the liberal media said was impossible. We produced the largest tax cut in Maine's history. Come 
comes to Maine, Maine is now open for business. I promise to bring transparency to government, and we are. Under Republican leadership, years of gift cards, European vacations, and lavish massages ended. It ended in the, con the conviction and incarceration of a former executive director of the Maine Turnpike Authority. I promise to eliminate Maine as a sanctuary state, and I did it on day one. Even as we mark our modest success, Maine needs structural changes in welfare, energy, and education. And I understand welfare, because I lived it. I understand the difference between a want and a need. party promised in 2010 that it would bring welfare change. We must deliver on this promise. While we have made some minor changes like the five-year cap placed on welfare, Republicans must come together as a unit in Augusta to make the real structural changes that are needed for, to get on the road to prosperity in our state. In the last decade, welfare has increased by one billion dollars, folks. One B for billion dollars. We need to get it under control. Even as I speak to you today, we are 90 million dollars away from balancing our budget and it's all due to welfare. It is simply wrong and unfair for Maine people who earn far less than the national average to pay far more than the national average for welfare. Year after year, State government has used one-time federal s stimulus monies, accounting gimmicks, gimmicks, misuse of funds, not paying our hospitals to feed the beast. The time to fix this problem is now. We need, we need real structural change in Augusta. There is such a thing as a free lunch, but you're picking up the tab. Maine's welfare program is cannibalizing the rest of state government. I am compassionate and committed to our children, our elderly, and our disabled. But to all you able-bodied people out there, get off the couch and get yourself a job. reduce 
excessive spending and reestablish the core principles of a good, sound welfare program. I care for our kids, our elderly, and our disabled. And that's who I'm committed to take care of. So here is a message to the editorial writers and paid advocates. Is there a medic here? Do we need a medic, please? We need a medic. Report to the center. Thank you. Maine people are tired of your rhetoric. I ask you to contact all your legislators and your senators. Demand that they fix welfare. Hold their feet to the fire. Republicans are not the party of kicking the can down the road. We're the party of fixing it. The number one inhibitor to job creation in the state of Maine is our high energy costs. If we want economic prosperity, we must reduce the cost of oil, gasoline, and electricity. We cannot continue to pay $326 million per year above the national average and expect to keep our main jobs and our jobs creators to invest in Maine. <laughs> Some in Augusta believe government should mandate which energy sources you should have regardless of expense. My belief is, if it's cheap, we like you. If it's expensive, go away. <laughs> Maine's renewable mandates are doing one thing, fattening the bank accounts, of a few at the expense of hard work and mainers. This session, I propose removing the 100 megawatt restriction on renewable, inexpensive hydropower. a fierce battle in which greed won and Maine people lost. I believe the two special interest groups that are being ignored in Augusta are the ratepayers and the taxpayers. the Maine's special interest group, when it comes to Mainers and Maine special interest groups, I will stand with the Mainers. Let me be clear, I am not opposed to any form of energy. The only energy I want is affordable energy for Maine. But I will say this, it is morally and ethically wrong to take money from those who can afford it the least to line the pockets of those who are connected in Augusta. We all know Angus King. 
He wants to be a U.S. Senator. But before the media co coronates him, <laughs> let me do it. <laughs> Angus King is the king of the wind cartel. Yes, he's likable, but let's not forget that he has made a fortune off your backs. He continually lobbies for high energy prices. While I am committed to fighting, to reducing the cost of energy to all Mainers and all Maine companies. Maine deserves prosperity. <laughs> Job creators, they tell us that they have jobs, but they can't find the skills to, do the, to perform those jobs. Improving education in Maine starts with one very simple step. Putting our kids first. I ask everyone, before you make a decision on education, you need to ask, what is best for the student? Our kids must come first. Not union bosses, not superintendents, and not the principal. It's about our kids. career and technical education reform this year. I think it's high time we bring back tech and vo vocational education back to the front of the building. We passed new legislation that gives teachers feedback on their classroom effectiveness. I introduced the bill giving Maine families choice. Ladies and gentlemen, children's educational opportunities here in the state of Maine should not be determined by their street address. Our kids deserve quality, a quality education and I aim to get it for them. Finally, there's been a lot of talk the last couple of weeks in Augusta about bonds. A bond is not a grant. A bond is a loan, is a loan that has interest attached to it. I refuse to allow bonds to be passed until the main legislature balances its budget and pays its bills.
is it takes very little on money to create a job. During the Obama, during the Baldacci administration, Thank you. 